the royal and imperial courts of Asia, particularly ancient Japan, had complex systems of female hierarchy. The rulers' wives and female relatives were at the top and a great many other ladies were there to serve them. Similar to the ladies-in-waiting of European royal courts, these women cared for the rooms and wardrobes of high-ranking women, assisted them in grooming, entertained them, kept them company, acted as secretaries, and passed on the latest gossip of palace intrigue. In ancient Japan, where polygamy was normal, all these ladies were available to the monarch for sexual services. Later termed concubines, if these women piqued the emperor's interest, they could be promoted to the highest point in the court, but if they disobey or show any form of incompetence, they could be banished from the kingdom or even worse, be put to death. From one to potentially hundreds, there was no cap on the number of women the emperor could decide he wanted. Living with an emperor would undoubtedly mean that these women had to live shockingly different lives from what is and was considered normal. Welcome to Crazy History, where we bring you the craziest, weirdest facts from human history. Join us today as we look at the crazy life of a concubine in ancient Japan. Their punishments were gruesome. One of the most important traits a concubine was expected to have was a high level of elegance. Anything less was met with dire punishments, which could range from banishment to execution. These types of executions were not a rare event in the courtyard also. If a concubine was seen to have embarrassed the emperor during a meeting with a foreign dignitary, she would be beheaded on the spot. Gossip and conspiracy against the emperor were also sternly frowned upon, as seen in the story of two concubines who conspired to poison the emperor and escape. They were eventually apprehended before they could carry out their plan. Their punishment? execution, but this time, it was an ordinary execution method. They would be executed by a method known as Lingchai. Lingchai was known as death by a thousand cuts. From the ominous name, you might begin to get an idea. Death by a thousand cuts involved the criminal, being tied to a wooden stake or pole, and then the executioners would begin to take tiny deep cuts in the skin of the criminal. These cuts could reach up to 500, and at times would reach a thousand before the criminal died of intense pain and blood loss. No secrets were kept from the emperor. In Confucianism, it is stated that good wives should have no thoughts of jealousy. But in practice, that was rarely the case. In ancient Japan, there was a story of an emperor who had a favored concubine, but she had trouble conceiving. And when she finally became pregnant, her baby was stillborn. If she learned that another concubine was pregnant, she would force them to undergo an abortion. One minor concubine managed to keep her pregnancy a secret, and a eunuch helped her sneak her son out of the palace and raised him. When the emperor realized that all his efforts hadn't resulted in any living heirs, he was devastated, but a eunuch then informed him that he did have one living child. The emperor was furious after learning this. After naming the son as his heir, he went on to execute the mother of the child and also the eunuch who helped her sneak the child out of the palace. Their nutrition was very poor. Although many may think that being chosen as a concubine in ancient Japan was a privilege, their diet did not reflect this at all. Most Japanese emperors preferred women with a more slim and slender physique, and as such, they subjected their concubines to long stretches without food. All they were given to eat from time to time were mulberry leaves and rainwater. This strict diet made sure that the emperor's concubines were slim just like he likes his women. Needless to say, this intense dietary regimen resulted in the deaths of thousands of concubines throughout the years as many of them could not cope with such a lifestyle. Not only was the nutrition of the concubines poor, but to a certain extent, that of the emperor was too. Part of the emperor's diet included the menstrual blood of his starved concubines. They believed the blood was said to be regarded as an elixir, and they would pool in the different types of bloods of their concubines and drink, to attain immunity to sickness, long life and even mortality. They were under 24-7 surveillance. To live in the courtyard of an emperor would be the dream of many young women, as this would provide them unimaginable luxuries, opportunities, and a plethora of all other benefits. One of the things they would have to give up, however, would be their privacy. As a concubine of an ancient Japanese emperor, they were not allowed to communicate with just anyone. This was done to make sure that the concubine did not fall in love with any other person other than the emperor. And to ensure this was the case, a eunuch was tasked to follow each concubine wherever she went. There was no such thing as a casual stroll in the park alone anymore. They always had to be accompanied by their designated eunuch. And if a concubine was to defy the words of the emperor by not moving along with her eunuch, 
Her punishment could range anywhere from banishment from the kingdom as a whole to execution. They exchanged babies. In most places you visit in the world, it is often common knowledge that every human is equal and no one person is greater or more important than the next, however, this was not the case in the courtyards of ancient Japan. Depending on how important a concubine was to the emperor, she was ranked accordingly. Those who bore the emperor a son were to give their child to the courtyard and would have their son raised by the concubines who bore daughters, and the concubines of the emperor who bore daughters were to submit their child to the courtyard and would have their daughters raised by the concubines who bore sons. This was to ensure that no one stole anyone's child, because it would not be possible to identify anyone's child. Even if you hated a fellow concubine, you would not be able to do anything to her child because you would not know whose child belonged to who. They were used as sacrifices. At this point, we have already made it clear that the life of a concubine in ancient Japan was not all honey and roses. It is more disturbing because the emperor is the one who invites them to join his courtyard. He then proceeds to treat them how he likes. Following that trend, the emperor often used his own selected concubines as sacrifices. A story states that an emperor once had a conflict with a general from another region, and after seeing the damage the war had brought to his kingdom, he asked the general what he could offer to end the war. The general decided he wanted the head of the emperor's top concubines, or else he would not stop the rampage. The emperor agreed, and all of his top concubines were given as a sacrifice to the general. Apart from wars, concubines were also often sacrificed to please the gods on numerous occasions. Sacrificial ceremonies of the concubines often involved the concubines being drowned, flayed, boiled alive, or even burnt alive, depending on whatever the chief priest demanded in order to appease the gods. With all that has been said, what do you think about the concubines of ancient Japan now? Which fact was the most shocking to you? Would you have loved to be a concubine in ancient Japan? Tell me your answers down in the comment section. Hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did don't forget to like and subscribe. Also hit the bell as well so you don't miss any video cause we have a lot more interesting things to come. See you soon.